right, the first video for today is going to be how we deal with a uh, burette, which you've never used before. A burette is basically a fancy word for a graduated cylinder um, that has the ability to slowly release liquid. So what we're going to be doing is we are going to be putting whatever our liquid is in here and slowly draining it into something else, okay? There's a couple of important things you need to know about the burette before we start, however. So the burette is very long, it's glass, it breaks very easily, so please don't drop them and be very gentle as you're working with it. This right here already has cracks on the end, so you guys probably will not be using that. Remember to check over for cracks um, as you look over it. Make sure that you grab one that I specify to make sure they're clean. Okay, so when setting this up, this is what's called a stopcock. Um, this goes in the bottom, and all it does is it has a hole through which um, when the stopcock is open, so in a elongated direction, this means that liquid can flow from the top to the bottom. When, it, when you turn it and it's horizontal, this means that no liquid is allowed to flow through here, um, through the tip of this and that is what is the closed position. As you are releasing liquid, if you want to let a lot out at the same time, you can turn it, let it straight down, and it'll, it'll fall out pretty quick. If you want to control it and make it really slow, you would want to turn it as fast as possible. To keep this anchored in here so it doesn't slide out, um, most of the ones that I'm going to have you use will also have a clip with them, and this clip goes on the very end. Sorry, they can be very hard to do, so you and your partner might need to tag team this. Um, this clip goes on the end. Uh, this might not be the right clip for it, but that's okay. Just to make sure that once it's on, it can't be pulled out. Okay, so please make sure once again, this clip gets on there. Otherwise, you're going to have a leaky, disgusting mess um, as you guys are doing this lab. All right, so when you were setting this up, you were going to be using a ring stand to hold this vertical. And this is what's called a burette clamp. The burette clamps are found in this drawer, which if you're in my classroom and we pan, it's in the bottom drawer right here. I'll have it open for you guys on lab day. All right. Oops. So the burette clamp has two areas where you can clamp your um, your burette on, so one on each side, and this is a little lever. This right here is just like what we used last time when we were doing the um, uh, the ring stand. So this middle part is where the ring stand is going to go through. So you're going to run it through that, and then you're going to twist to go ahead and clamp this to the ring stand, making sure it's really tight because I don't want my burettes to um, break. Okay, so like so. All right, the next thing that you're going to do is the burettes will have been washed by me, but you always need to rinse the burettes thoroughly with not only DI water, just to make sure that there's no regular water. By doing so, I'm going to take my squirt bottle, oop, make sure it's in the closed position, and I'm going to kind of just tip it just to get the inside and run it all through with liquid so that you don't spray DI water everywhere like I did. Please make sure you hold it over the sink as you want to pour it out. You'll once again let the stopper go and let all the liquid go through. Please make sure you clean out the tip as well. All right, the next thing, before you use your burette, oops, my clip's falling off. You also need to make sure, um, so notice how I just clipped it in here. I use this little bar right here that holds it and then it goes through this side so you have it supported on top, on the bottom, and through the middle. Um, the other thing that's going to be really important is you need to rinse your burette at least twice with whatever substance you're using. This is to make sure that anything in the burette that is not what we want in our experiment has been washed clean. If this is not which if you don't do this, what you're going to end up with is you're going to end up with other crap in, burette, in your burette which are going to lead you to have different volumes than what you should um, have in your lab. So I'm going to use red liquid just to make it easier for what you see. You're going to go ahead and pour a little bit in through and we're going to clean it just like we did with the DI water. So I want to make sure that as I'm tilting I'm kind of rotating and so my liquid is kind of getting moved around in there and I'm rinsing off the sides all the way to the bottom and then you obviously want to hold this over the sink so it all goes through there. Once again, we need to make sure the tip also gets cleaned. And so to do that, whatever excess you have, just go ahead and run through the tip by just letting it go through. 
once again, twice is how you're going to do this. So I, if I, in an ideal world, I would once again go through, put a little bit of liquid in there. It doesn't need to be full. Once again, I'm tilting it just to make sure that all of it gets out. I'm going to go ahead and release it once again through the tip because it always needs to make sure that that gets clean as well. All right, so when you fill up your burette for real, you want to put, it doesn't really matter what volume you get to. We're always going to be taking a reading of volume after that. But I'm going to go ahead and fill this up for the most part all the way to the top with my liquid, with whatever I've got in here. One of the important things to notice about my burette, so once I've got it filled, notice how I've got all my red liquid going all the way up through the top. Please note, when we let this out, we're going to be letting out, we are going to be determining how much volume we figure out by the starting volume minus our ending volume. However, if you don't start with any of the volume in the tip, if this isn't full, as soon as you release volume out of your burette, you are not actually releasing volume into your um, early iron flask at the bottom, or in this case, I can just put my, um, I can go ahead and put my beaker under there. When you let liquid out, what you're actually doing first is putting liquid into the volume of this. And so you were adding it, if you didn't make sure that your burette tip was full, you would be adding it in your calculations as if you had already added that liquid to your burette, which you are into the, um, the flask at the bottom into your titration, which you haven't. Once again, that volume is not going into your um, beaker, or your Erlenmeyer flask, or whatever your reaction is, it's going through the tip. So please make sure that when you start, before you fill it, before you take your first um, volume reading, you want to go ahead and make sure that you drain some of this off, and you can drain it into the sink, you can drain it back into your initial container, but that your tip of your burette should be filled all the way with liquid before you start, okay? Try not to get any air bubbles. It doesn't matter if you release some out. So I've got some in my beaker. You can go ahead and add it back into the top, all right? But you always have to start with a full tip of your burette. All right, the next thing. When you were reading this, these can be really difficult to read, and so I've got a piece of white paper up here, and hopefully you can read. Oh, I'm gonna leave that this way. Hopefully you can read this. Um, it might be really hard to see with this camera. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw this for you. When you look at your burette, okay, so you've got this one, for instance, has lines for let's say 26. And then it's got one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So that's 27. Okay, so if my liquid is resting like here, whenever we read with sig figs, you always read to the lowest marking that the tool reads, and then you read one past. So this line represents 26. In between 26 and 27, I've drawn it as having 10 lines. So I have 10 increments for a total of one milliliter. So each one of these lines, if we do my math, represents 0.1 ml. So this is 26.1, this would be 26.2, 26.3, 26.4, 26.5, 26.6, 26.7, 26.8, 26.9, 26.10, 26.11, 26.12, 26.13, 26.14, 26.15, 26.16, 26.17, 26.18, 26.19, 26.20, 26.21, 26.22, 26.23, 26.24, 26.25, 26.26, 26.27, 26.28, 26.29, 26.30, 26.31, 26.32, 26.33, 26.34, 26.35, 26.36, 26.37, 26.38, 26.39, 26.40, 26.41, 26.42, 26.43, 26.44, 26.45, 26.46, 26.47, 26.48, 26.49, 26.50, 26.51, 26.52, 26.53, 26.54, 26.55, 26.56, 26.57, 26.58, 26.59, 26.60, 26.61, 26.62, 26.63, 26.64, 26.65, 26.66, 26.67, 26.68, 26.69, 26.70, 26.71, 26.72, 26.73, 26.74, 26.75, 26.76, 26.77, 26.78, 26.79, 26.80, 26.81, 26.82, 26.83, 26.84, 26.85, 26.86, 26.87, 26.88, 26.89, 26.90, 26.91, 26.92, 26.93, 26.94, 26.95, 26.96, 26.97, 26.98, 26.99, 26.10, 26.11, 26.12, 26.13, 26.14, 26.15, 26.16, 26.17, 26.18, 26.19, 26.20, 26.21, 26.22, 26.23, 26.24, 26.25, 26.26, 26.27, 26.28, 26.29, 26.30, 26.31, 26.32, 26.33, 26.34, 26.35, 26.36, 26.37, 26.38, 26.39, 26.40, 26.41, 26.42, 26.43, 26.44, 26.45, 26.46, 26.47, 26.48, 26.49, 26.50, 26.51, 26.52, 26.53, 26.54, 26.55, 26.56, 26.57, 26.58, 26.59, 26.60, 26.61, 26.62, 26.63, 26.64, 26.65, 26.66, 26.67, 26.68, 26.69, 26.70, 26.71, 26.72, 26.73, 26.74, 26.75, 26.76, 26.77, 26.78, 26.79, 26.80, 26.81, 26.82, 26.83, 26.84, 26.85, 26.86, 26.87, 26.88, 26.89, 26.90, 26.91, 26.92, 26.93, 26.94, 26.95, 26.96, 26.97, 26.98, 26.99, 26.10, 26.11, 26.12, 26.13, 26.14, 26.15, 26.16, 26.17, 26.18, 26.19, 26.20, 26.21, 26.22, 26.23, 26.24, 26.25, 26.26, 26.27, 26.28, 26.29, 26.30, 26.31, 26.32, 26.33, 26.34, 26.35, 26.36, 26.37, 26.38, 26.39, 26.40, 26.41, 26.42, 26.43, 26.44, 26.45, 26.46, 26.47, 26.48, 26.49, 26.50, 26.51, 26.52, 26.53, 26.54, 26.55, 26.56, 26.57, 26.58, 26.59, 26.60, 26.61, 26.62, 26.63, 26.64, 26.65, 26.66, 26.67, 26.68, 26.69, 26.70, 26.71, 26.72, 26.73, 26.74, 26.75, 26.76, 26.77, 26.78, 26.79, 26.80, 26.81, 26.82, 26.83, 26.84, 26.85, 26.86, 26.87, 26.88, 26.89, 26.90, 26.91, 26.92, 26.93, 26.94, 26.95, 26.96, 26.97, 26.98, 26.99, 26.10, 26.11, 26.12, 26.13, 26.14, 26.15, 26.16, 26.17, 26.18, 26.19, 26.20, 26.21, 26.22, 26.23, 26.24, 26.25, 26.26, 26.27, 26.28, 26.29, 26.30, 26.31, 26.32, 26.33, 26.34, 26.35, 26.36, 26.37, 26.38, 26.39, 26.40, 26.41, 26.42, 26.43, 26.44, 26.45, 26.46, 26.47, 26.48, 26.49, 26.50, 26.51, 26.52, 26.53, 26.54, 26.55, 26.56, 26.57, 26.58, 26.59, 26.60, 26.61, 26.62, 26.63, 26.64, 26.65, 26.66, 26.67, 26.68, 26.69, 26.70, 26.71, 26.72, 26.73, 26.74, 26.75, 26.76, 26.77, 26.78, 26.79, 26.80, 26.81, 26.82, 26.83, 26.84, 26.85, 26.86, 26.87, 26.88, 26.89, 26.90, 26.91, 26.92, 26.93, 26.94, 26.95, 26.96, 26.97, 26.98, 26.99, 26.10, 26.11, 26.12, 26.13, 26.14, 26.15, 26.16, 26.17, 26.18, 26.19, 26.20, 26.21, 26.22, 26.23, 26.24, 26.25, 26.26, 26.27, 26.28, 26.29, 26.30, 26.31, 26.32, 26.33, 26.34, 26.35, 26.36, 26.37, 26.38, 26.39, 26.40, 26.41, 26.42, 26.43, 26.44, 26.45, 26.46, 26.47, 26.48, 26.49, 26.50, 26.51, 26.52, 26.53, 26.54, 26.55, 26.56, 26.57, 26.58, 26.59, 26.60, 26.61, 26.62, 26.63, 26.64, 26.65, 26.66, 26.67, 26.68, 26.69, 26.70, 26.71, 26.72, 26.73, 26.74, 26.75, 26.76, 26.77, 26.78, 26.79, 26.80, 26.81, 26.82, 26.83, 26.84, 26.85, 26.86, 26.87, 26.88, 26.89, 26.90, 26.91, 26.92, 26.93, 26.94, 26.95, 26.96, 26.97, 26.98, 26.99, 26.10, 26.11, 26.12, 26.13, 26.14, 26.15, 26.16, 26.17, 26.18, 26.19, 26.20, 26.21, 26.22, 26.23, 26.24, 26.25, 26.26, 26.27, 26.28, 26.29, 26.30, 26.31, 26.32, 26.33, 26.34, 26.35, 26.36, 26.37, 26.38, 26.39, 26.40, 26.41, 26.42, 26.43, 26.44, 26.45, 26.46, 26.47, 26.48, 26.49, 26.50, 26.51, 26.52, 26.53, 26.54, 26.55, 26.56, 26.57, 26.58, 26.59, 26.60, 26.61, 26.62, 26.63, 26.64, 26.65, 26.66, 26.67, 26.68, 26.69, 26.70, 26.71, 26.72, 26.73, 26.74, 26.75, 26.76, 26
um, line, if this were my line here, this would be 26.9, this would be 27.0. So because this is an on the line exactly for 26.9, I might read it as 26.95. Some of you guys out there might read it as 26.94, and that's fine. Remember, this last digit is our digit of uncertainty. Okay, when you are done, so you're going to be doing three different titrations, you must make sure that whenever you start, you always start with your starting volume. As you have the liquid and you pour it out, wherever you stop is your ending volume, and you must note whatever that is. If you, if you only go like a distance of maybe 10 ml and you have to do another titration, because your migret or my burette has more than 10 mls in there, I can go ahead and start with the same volume of liquid for my next titration. However, if, say for instance, I'm all the way at the bottom of my burette, and I've pretty much drained it, and on my first titration I saw that I needed 60 mls of liquid, I would want to make sure that if I'm starting and I start with, say, 40 mls in there, I would want to go ahead and fill my burette all the way back up to the top before I start my next titration with titrant. Because there's nothing worse than starting a titration, running out of volume, and then having to stop and refill and calculate the volume twice. One other thing to note, these burettes, I know that you can't really see it, but this is the line for the 100 mil mark. Here, there are no volume markings. So if you have volume and you read past the 100 mil mark, we don't know what volume you end up with if your liquid is past that. So please, before you run out of liquid, if you need to stop for whatever reason and do a second titration, make sure you have more liquid in there because if you stop right here and you were to take a measurement, oh, this you can't see, but I don't have a line that tells me what volume is in there. Okay, so please make sure once again that when you fill up your burette, if my last volume reading is to here, there's no way I know what volume this is unless I've measured it beforehand. Okay, that's it.